This is Morning Breath, your drive time devotion sure to jumpstart your day. Hosted by Pastor Matt and Jessica Stahlbaum. Morning Breath starts now. Hey, welcome to Morning Breath, your drive time devotion sure to jumpstart your day. This is Matt and Jessica in the mornings. How are you doing today? I hope you're doing well. We're doing good. What's been going on? Well, it's June, just like that. I think we all felt like March went on forever, and then April and May just evaporated. Do you feel that way? I feel like it was all one day, to be honest. One long day. It just never was a different day, but one day. Yeah, and the night was really dark. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I think we're coming out of it. I'm really glad to live where we live because we are starting to to have more freedom and back to, you know, a new normal. And um, our church doors are open for the most part. We're still working on getting a VR campus uh, option. And um, so if you could pray with us, like just believe with us that that's going to open up sooner than later. Uh, Working on that. What else are we working on? Yeah, we're working hard with Bavard County Schools to figure out the soonest they can open. And we've reached out to a lot of other businesses, uh, hotels, Parks and Rec, and they all pretty much have the same kind of thinking right now. It's very difficult to open, uh, which we totally understand. Um, but at the end of the day, we're, we're looking for somebody to open the doors, but mostly we just want to be back in Vera High School. It's where we have church right now. Yeah. And it's in this middle of this progression of where we're literally going to be starting our building project any month now. Uh, in fact, this uh, the day that we're recording this, I spent two and a half hours with the builder, the architect, the civil engineer, and it was it was an incredible meeting. We were like coming down to the wire on design and all the stuff you've got to figure out and the, the size and just everything. So It's amazing to see the land cleared off. It's been mowed down and it still has to be rooted and what, are, what do you call it, graded and all that to be prepared to be built on. But just to see it cleared off shows you how big five acres is, you know, yeah. when, it, when it has all the trees on it, you have to go by. It's at the corner of Vera Boulevard and Tavistock and right off the 95 exit of Vera Boulevard. And it, you can't miss it. It's just the only vacant cleared piece of land within, you know, tons of miles. And it's just exciting to know that the first thing that's going to be built on that land is a church. That is so exciting. It is. So, and it's going to happen. Like it's not, not going to happen. So it's really exciting to see, even in this, crazy uncertain time that we are in right now and that we've been in for the past few months like it's still moving forward and god is still working and yeah i think in the middle of all the pain and all the frustrations and all the confusion and all the life changes there's still some pretty neat things happening absolutely um one is you know we just launched people in space from the united states of america so let's celebrate as uh, a community here the space coast yeah These are the things that are going to boost our economy is space travel and civilian space travels coming. And I mean, companies are coming to this area. Bavard County, we have a lot of reasons to rejoice Mm -hmm. during this time. Um, You know, what's interesting, too, is back in 2011 was the last time there was a manned space launch. And our economy was good-ish back then. But I mean, we had had that crash in 2008 where the uh, space was taken, you know, off the table. Like housing crash? The housing crash. And then space was taken off the table after 2011. And so now that's coming back. It is such a representation of rebirth in this area. And so it's exciting to live here. There are some good things happening all over the place. And that's what, yes, tough things have happened in our nation. Yes, uh, a lot of, you know, just unrest, especially in terms of racial issues. And then, of course, coming out of a pandemic mindset, uh, an isolation mindset, there, all these things have happening. They're all real and they're all real problems. And we're working through all of them. And we're with you. We stand with you. We, we're, we're here to work through all those things. We're showing love through all this process. But there are still some amazing things happening. Yeah. Your children, if you have children, uh, my children, they're still growing. Mm-hmm. You know, A lot and right? eating a lot. <laughs> yeah. Like things are still happening. Yeah. The state's opening up. It's yeah. There's some good things to celebrate. And uh, we're still moving forward with the building project. And, you know, it's it's going to happen. And it's going to be incredible for our community. Just yeah. another testimony of who God is. Yeah, it's exciting. So we have been in Romans. And, you know, we may be a little rusty because we took the week off. And we played an old one of us last week. So we're happy to be back. 
we missed you and we're back. Romans 13. Um, I always forget to do 14. Oh, there's only 14 verses, so I'll read through seven. Okay? Yes. Read. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, granted by his permission and sanction, and those which exist have been put in place by God. Therefore, whoever re resists governmental authority resists the ordinance of God, and those who have resisted it will bring judgment, civil penalty on themselves. For civil authorities are not a source of fear for people of good behavior, but for those who do evil. Do you want to be unafraid of authority? Do what is good, and you will receive approval and commendation. For he is God's servant to you for good. But if you do wrong, you should be afraid, for he does not carry the executioner's sword for nothing. He is God's servant, an avenger who brings punishment on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be subject to civil authorities, not only to escape the punishment that comes with wrongdoing, but also as a matter of principle, knowing what's right before God. For the same reason, you pay taxes. For civil authorities are God's servants, devoting themselves to governance. Pay to all what is due, tax to whom tax is due, customs to whom customs, respect to whom respect, honor to whom honor. Owe nothing to anyone except to love and seek the best for one another. For he who unselfishly loves his neighbor has fulfilled the essence of the law re relating to one's fellow man. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this statement, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, it never hurts anyone. Therefore, unselfish love is the fulfillment of the law. Do this knowing that this is a critical time. It's already the hour for you to awaken from your sleep of spiritual complacency. For our salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed in Christ. The night, this present evil age is almost gone and the day of Christ's return is almost here. So let us fling away the works of darkness and put on the full armor of light. Let us conduct ourselves properly and honorably as in the light of day, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual promiscuity and irresponsibility, not in quarreling and jealousy, but clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for, nor even think about gratifying the flesh in regard to its improper desires. Amen. Amen. I read it all. You did a good job. There's only 14 verses. Yeah, you did good. I love verse 10. So I picked verse 10 to do my soap and I like to model how to do my soap because I think it's a great way to read your Bible. And again, SOAP stands for Scripture, Observation, Application, and Prayer. And so you, the goal is to read one chapter, follow along with us on Morning Breath, pick one verse out of that one chapter, and do the SOAP process with it. So mm -hmm. my verse 10 says, Love does no wrong to a neighbor. It never hurts anyone. Therefore, unselfish love is the fulfillment of the law. So my observation was this. It says in the verse prior that all the commandments can be summed up in this. Every single commandment can be brought back to love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus came to, it says in one part of the Bible, not to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. And so he came to fulfill this and he did that by being a model of how to love your neighbor. I mean, up until he was crucified on, on the cross, actually, he says, forgive them for they know not what they do. He was the epitome of humility. He was the epitome of loving your neighbor. I mean, the people who are literally killing him, he is saying, God, they have no idea what they're doing right now. Please forgive them. I mean, that is so convicting for me. I mean, I get mad if someone looks at me wrong while I'm driving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I made that lane change perfectly. Why would you look at me like that? You know, like it's ridiculous. It's amazing. And so humility, I think, is the key and probably the chief attribute that we need to tap into in order to consistently love our neighbor and do no wrong to them. Because if I unselfishly loved you at all times, it would change everything. Even if it didn't change you, I think eventually it would. Not that you need changing because you're amazing. But in moments where we're not getting along and we're arguing, if I could unselfishly love you, then I would put my needs to the side and I would, uh, I would just unselfishly love you you know, and ha be humble. And honestly, if all of us could do, that's one person. Like it would change so much in one person and your family. But if everyone in the world would do this, it would be world peace, mm -hmm. you know, like literally it would, it's tough. So I have a little story. And this happened this morning, I think, yeah, maybe this morning or yes yesterday morning. So you and I were um, disagreeing about something or kind of like getting at each other, arguing. You were very uh, stressed out and I brought something up and it just didn't go well. And 
So you ended up apologizing and I didn't because I don't think I did anything wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't think that I did anything wrong, but our daughter was there and she go, I'm walking away. You had apologized. I forgave you. I'm walking away. And she goes, you need to say you're sorry too. And I'm like, I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> now I'm talking to an eight year old and trying to justify myself. And she's like, no matter what you did, saying sorry makes you feel better. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. And I don't know if you remember, but I came back in the closet and I was like, Sorry. Was I in the closet? Yes. I was <laughs> we like, have a closet you can walk It's a little in. big, yeah. I wasn't hiding in a closet. Right. So you were trying to get ready to leave. And so I just said sorry. And I meant it, but it was just, you know, one of those sorries that's like really hard to get out of your mouth. And so I said it, and she's standing there the whole time. And so as we're walking away, she said, see, don't you feel better? And then she goes, you also say sorry to make your kid feel better. <laughs> You are so stinking wise. Like, oh my gosh, she's so humble. Like she has this childlike faith and humility about her that it's hard to hang on to as you get older, but really it just comes down to pride. Like I needed to kill my pride at that moment. Whether I felt I did anything wrong or not, I still needed to say sorry for my part in it. So I think that's a wonderful example. <laughs> no, I think it's a great example. And I think uh, it was yesterday. Yeah. I was 100% wrong in my mind. And so. And mine. But <laughs> I I often think humility is the beginning of reconciliation. And so you might not have the right words. And maybe you say sorry when you might not have done anything wrong. But sorry is getting the ball rolling at least. Like I am with you again. Like I'm not against you in this moment. Like we're on the same page, there's forgiveness rolling. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's why it works really well sometimes to say you're sorry first, even when you might have not initiated the argument, you might not be at fault in the argument. It's just something that, especially between two people that trust each other and love each other, and there isn't some kind of crazy out of balance abusive thing going on there. A sorry from you isn't like some admission that every time you're just this weak person that can't stand up for yourself, because that's not true. You. Do stand up for yourself. That's not true. And I do too. I also stand <laughs> up for myself. And uh, we, we have a very equal relationship when it comes to sharing our opinions. We're very good at it. Um, <laughs> but what it really comes back to is something I think you said earlier was if I approach our relationship for how can I love you mm -hmm. or serve your needs mm -hmm. versus how can I get my needs met. Right. And you approach me in the same way of, how can I serve you and love you and meet your needs? We'll never run out. Like I'm always pouring into you. Mm -hmm. Your tank fills up. You're pouring into me. Yeah. My tank fills up. You're pouring into me. Who fills your tank? God fills your tank, yeah. right? And so you're being filled by the Lord and you're being filled by me. Vice versa. I'm being filled by the Lord and you're filling me. Mm -hmm. I'm never running out. But if I go to... Our, our relationship and I go, I need these needs met. I'm not interested in meeting your needs. Mm -hmm. This, 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 and this. I need this. I need that. Do this for me. Do that for me. This, that, and the other thing. I'm taking from you and I'm taking in general and it doesn't, it, it, there's no giving in the process. So in the Bible says when you give, you receive in whichever way you give. You give to the uh, spirit, you receive life. You give to the flesh, you receive death. If you judge, you're judged. If you if you sow, you'll reap. Mm -hmm. And so you're enacting a supernatural gift of uh, what you give, you get back, right? That's supernatural. That People have seen that outside of Christian culture. They Some people call that karma. I don't believe in karma, but that's a word that's used out there, uh, basically saying what goes around comes around, and that is the secular version of karma. Yeah. Well, the actual biblical and true version of that is what you sow, what you give, you get back in return mm -hmm. and you empower the Lord to actually give back into your life. And so in all of that, there's still this thing of what are my needs and what are your needs? And that's where communication happens. Of, hey, by the way, these are my needs. Mm -hmm. I need you to know that like this is what fills my cup. Yeah. You know, what fills your cup? What fills my cup is different. Like if you are familiar with love languages, Gary Chapman, uh, there are five basic love languages that he presents. Uh, some of them include physical touch, acts of service, giving, um, quality time. Those. What's the fifth? I can't think of Words it. Words of right. affirmation. Words of affirmation. That's the fifth one. 
And each of us speak different love languages and receive and hear love differently. I receive, uh, I receive love in a few different ways, like physical touch for me. You know, I, that's actually a lot of times how I give love is by grabbing a hand and holding on to it. Like I feel I give love that way. And um, where you need to hear me say, I love you. You need to hear me say what I like about you, what I think is great about you. Where, mm -hmm. where when I start feeling love, I just grab a hold of you. Yeah. And that's me telling you, I love you. And, but I need to come out of my shell and say, no, I love you. You're an amazing woman. You're beautiful, whatever. Thank you for doing that. I need to say those things to affirm you so you hear mm -hmm. that I love you. And that's me meeting your need, not just doing it the way I want to. It's me showing you I love you, but doing it in a selfless way, in a not self-centered way, but actually in an others-focused mentality. And I yeah. think that's that's super important. Um, you know what I forgot to do because we have a new segment in Matt and Jessica in the morning. Oh. Jessica's book recommendations. Dun, dun, dun. We started this two weeks ago, and this is the second time. And I just happened to have this book by Andrew Murray called Humility, The Path to Holiness. Now, it's, now it's, it's very old. Let me see when this is written. 19, Super no, no, old. No, 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 no. 1916, 17. So anyway. I'll, let me do oh, the research. He, I know. Andrew Murray, he only lived from 1828 to 1917. So it was written during that time. And again, it's been published In the late recently. 1800s. Yes. And this book is so good. I have like every page highlighted to the maximum. And it talks about humility in the life of Jesus and the teaching of Jesus and the disciples of Jesus in our daily life. And it is very little, as you can see, but it is very, very good. And I highly recommend it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I have other books, but we'll save them for next week. I want to bring up something else. Uh, I want to talk about this phrase that just, it jumped out at me. Um, put on the armor of light. I was like, what is that? Verse 12, the night is nearly over. The oh. day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. And yeah. I was like, whoa. It's like, that's what we need right now. Mm -hmm. You know, in a way, I feel like God's, well, this past weekend, I preached a message about protecting your heart. The Bible says, guard your heart from out of it, everything flows, mm -hmm. right? Out of it flows the issues of life. Everything you do flows from your heart. That's the basic scripture. And I said this statement, I said, we need to wrap our soft heart in hard armor, okay? The Bible says that we put on the breastplate of righteousness, which is a hard piece of armor, which mm -hmm. protects your soft human heart. What oftentimes we do instead is we harden our heart to protect yeah. it you hurt me i harden my heart and i will not show you any love yeah i will not allow you into my life i will not become vulnerable i harden my heart when i'm when i make mistakes oftentimes i tend to harden my heart i mm -hmm. tend to grow dull in my emotions i tend to squash how i feel shut it all out because if i start thinking how i feel that and i start melting down and feel bad harden no instead we need to wrap our heart in the armor, the breastplate of righteousness, mm -hmm. right? But then I thought, wow, combine that with the thinking of the armor of light. Now this armor is hard, but it has intention. Yeah. And I talked a lot about what righteous intention is. Uh, in fact, righteousness is right standing with God. It's also right behavior or pure or holy behavior. But there's actually a third definition of righteousness, which is uh, justice and virtue given to each person equally. That is mm. actually a third definition awesome. of righteousness is that each human deserves justice and virtue wow. with, uh, with equality, which fits the day and age we live in right now where we're talking a lot about equality. But what I think we need to hear is that there's this armor of a light. In other words, that this hard armor, it's protective. You can't wound me because mm -hmm. I'm covered in armor. I'm righteous. I'm righteous behavior. I'm treating you righteously. Mm -hmm. But it's this armor of light that actually uh, shines in the darkness. There's a hope to the armor. Yeah. It's not an armor of fear. It's not an armor of aggression. It's powerful. It's mighty. It protects me. It's, it's for the warfare of guarding my heart and guarding justice and loving people and all of those things. But it's bright. Yeah. It's life giving. Mm -hmm. It stands out. It, it doesn't look scary. It, my love isn't scary. My opinions aren't scary. They don't scare people off. They draw people in. They, they bring people in. So I want to follow that. I want to, I want to, can I join? Mm -hmm. Can I join with you in this fight? Right? It draws people in. When our armor is intimidating, 
and scary, what happens is it drives fear in people. Now, fear is a great tool in warfare if you want to defeat your enemy. But the Bible says love your enemy. And if we're talking about people, we're not called to fight against people. Mm -hmm. We're called to fight against spiritual uh, powers and principalities and the forces of darkness. We're actually called to love people, love our enemies, love our neighbor, love others as we love ourselves. That's the second most important commandment of God's law. Yeah. So we can love people. We can stand for justice. We can become righteous, but we've got to wrap our soft heart in hard armor that shines the light of Jesus. I love that verse. I did not even notice that it said the armor of light and the verse right before it. I really, I is the one I actually highlighted and it says it is already the hour for you to awaken from your sleep of spiritual complacency. And I think that speaks so much this season that we're in. I feel like there was such spiritual complacency yeah. in people. And when everything was stripped away from us, we couldn't go to church anymore. We couldn't see our friends anymore. We couldn't like you, see our family anymore. You couldn't anymore. make your pastor just preach to you anymore. Yeah. Like, and I just mean, show up and be like, give it to me. You like know? we showed up at church and checked the box. Like that wasn't an option anymore. You yeah. actually had to go. Yes, we made online church available to you, but you had to. You had to we, go get it. And you turn had to go on, take the time. Yes. And so I think that spiritual complacency thing has been shaken off so many people. And people are finally starting to be like, I believe in Jesus. And this is why, you know, like your faith became real to you in this time and that is one way that the Lord is using what the enemy is meant for evil and he's turning it for good and so I really love that verse about the armor of light I have never seen that before it's so funny when you read this is why I love morning breath and how we do and how we read our Bibles together and how we're doing this with you is that when you hear my perspective and the verse that highlighted for me you'll look at it and be like I was like even are you in the right chapter I don't even remember reading those words so it's just awesome yeah I mean I read the Bible lots of times I've mm -hmm. heard hundreds and thousands of messages and I'm sure I've read this scripture, but man, oh man, the words armor of light just yeah, like, really whew, in my mind. Out. I like the next verse because I think it's a great encouragement. No matter who we are, let us behave decently as in the daytime, not carousing in drunkenness and sexual immorality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Rather, clothe yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. I love these verses because you see the obvious weapons of the enemy to use against other people, and they're used against you. You know, dissension and jealousy, these are weapons we use against other people. But then you see things like drunkenness and carousing and behavior, sexual immorality and debauchery. And so it's like, don't use the weapons. These The weapons of the world are going to hurt other people mm -hmm. and they're going to hurt you in yeah. the process. But the weapons that God gives us, the, clothe yourself with the armor of light. The weapons we have are for justice and for mercy, mm -hmm. for, for compassion. These are weapons. You know, um, when somebody's hurting and you might not know why they're hurting, you're not, you might not be able to relate to their hurt, but your compassion can come out. Mm -hmm. and, and you can have compassion on somebody and go, I, I don't know, I can't relate to what you're feeling. Yeah, And it kind of goes back to the whole I'm sorry thing. You know, like you're connecting with that person by saying you're sorry, even when maybe you might not be sorry. You can say, you know what? We started the day bad and I'm sorry for anything I contributed to that. Maybe I didn't see your perspective this morning. Mm -hmm. I should have waited to talk to you about this another time. I didn't see that. I see that now. I'm sorry. Like that's you connecting with the, the clothing that Jesus would give you, the armor that Jesus yeah. would give you. Humility. It's what we need to do in our culture today, no matter the circumstances, bridge the gap. Yeah. We need to be bridges. As believers, we need to bridge. We, we don't need to hedge ourselves and wedge ourselves in behind our moats and, and our you know towers and our walls. No, we need to build bridges mm -hmm. outside the four walls of the church, outside of our homes, outside of our communities, and bridge to those that are hurting. You know, you may not agree with that point of view or you may not understand that point of view, but guess what? You can bridge to them and you can say, look, let's meet here. Let's meet with value for human life. Let's meet for compassion for the weak. Let's meet mm -hmm. for justice for the for the, the people that are hurting and, and have not had justice in their life. Let's not be instigators of, of violence in any way. Like, let's not rage with the devil's tools of, of jealousy and rage and anger. Yeah. Let's fight with the armor of light. Let's fight... And, Look, let's be victorious in our fights. Like, mm -hmm. we don't have enough time to go into this, but I'll say this very thing at the end. It talks about obeying your government in the beginning of this chapter, which is odd for Americans, because like, 
what is our government? We the people are actually the government. Mm -hmm. We are voting people into power. Now, of course, there's things out of our control and there's money and all that stuff. But we want to be victorious in this country. We can wield power. We actually can vote the people we want in. When you don't like something in this country, wield your weapons of choice and, and voting and yeah. building your business and building your community. Like that person doesn't run your life. You get to run your life. That's yeah. the blessing of living in America. We actually get to do things in this country that this Roman, these Roman people could never have challenged the Roman government. No. They would have been crucified. Right. We can actually challenge our government we because we are actually the people of our own government. We vote. We put people into power. People that I don't want in power have been in power. People I want in power, they get in power. Like, okay, because we, can be we part of the process. are voting. We can be a part of the process. I think we have one more thing, and I want to say uh, verse 7 really adds on to this and wraps it up. It says, pay to all what is due, tax to whom is taxes due, customs to whom customs. But then it switches, and it says, respect to whom respect and honor to whom honor. And I just want to say one last thing about honor and respect, I think are so lacking in this age of social mm. media. And it is only getting worse, in my opinion, from what I am seeing, because everyone thinks they have a platform because it appears that they do. However many followers they can get and likes they can get, that is their platform. And they can build it as big or as small as they want to. And I think disagreeing is fine, but we have to do it in an honorable Honorably, way. We need to go first to the person privately and not blast them in a story public. or in a, in a public forum or on a post, blast them without talking to them first. I think it's defamation. I think it's wrong. And I think we can do better, especially as believers. When we don't agree with the ch each other and we're putting it out there in a public forum, we are dividing. It says in the Bible, a house divided cannot stand. And so we cannot be divided against one another. Go to the person have, first and talk to them. We have to stop dehumanizing people. Yes. And social media dehumanizes us. Yes. Where we wouldn't say that to someone's face. Never. But we have to humanize one another and exercise those abilities when we post on social media. Yeah. So go to the person first and talk to them. And if then if they are unwilling to talk, do what it says biblically. Go with someone else. Like, let's take these steps and let's be above all of this stuff. Yeah. What and a great can, word. You can tell I hit a chord. All right, oh. so we so we are going to uh, end now, and we will be back with you next Monday. Thanks for joining us. All right, see you next time. Thank you for listening to Morning Breath from East Coast Christian Center. We hope to see you at one of our locations this weekend. For additional information, such as service times, events, and more, please visit us at eccc.us. Thanks, and we hope you have a blessed day.